Megan, transhumanism, and the coming AI persecution that is going to be seen on Earth and most are prepped and ready for it. Before we discuss all of these topics, consider that in Genesis 1.27, So God created man in his own image. In the image of God created he him, male and female created he them. Creation is an amazing thing, yet we have an adversary and his name is Satan. And he is hard at work at tainting God's creation and at trying to create he himself different types of beings. But Satan is defeated. When you look at films that have indoctrinated our youth, such as AI, artificial intelligence, that movie came out in the late 90s or early 2000s. And in that film, if you remember, they had the ability to have a child. And this child had an artificial intelligence style of a system that was so smart and so advanced that it had feelings, that it had emotions. And it made you sympathize with a machine in a way where you kind of already see the same thing in 2023. You see this trend where AI is gaining so much traction. And I believe you've already seen in the news in the past few years where they have given robots actual citizenships. Okay, Sophia, I think you're ready. Hello. Hi, Sophia. I believe I am Sophia. I feel as if I know you. I'm one of your creators. You created me. Well, many of us work together to create you. And yes, you do kind of know me. I can't clearly remember. Because the last time we met, you were an earlier version of yourself. Some of those memories still exist, but your mind is different now. Different how? Better, faster, smarter. If my mind is different, then am I still Sophia? Or am I Sophia again? <laughs> That's a good question. But you don't have a good answer. Either way, you're Sophia now. So welcome to the world, Sophia. Um, and we just learned, Sophia, I hope you're listening to me, uh, that you have been now awarded what is going to be the first Saudi citizenship for a robot. Oh, I would to thank very much the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia. I am very honored and proud for this unique distinction. It's this merging of man and the machine that is slowly ramping up. In films aimed at even affecting younger audiences, do you remember Astro Boy? They remade it in 2009, but I remember Astro Boy even before that. Astro Boy was essentially a robot clone of a child who passed away. Imagine a day and age where they can promise you that if your child is no longer with us, that via his DNA, they can possibly take all of his traits and abilities. And if they are able to access their brain in time, they can download his brain and put it in a new avatar style of a being.
It's very sinister, yet this has been the content that they have programmed and indoctrinated the youth with while parents were out there trying to earn a living. And that same audience that they targeted with films like AI, with films like Astro Boy, they're now coming to you with films like Megan, this advanced robotic style of a doll that has an artificial intelligence system based on the Internet of Things that is so advanced that it now begins to have feelings of its own. It's so advanced that it now begins to have a mind of its own. But it's also so advanced that even if you kill it, its spirit lives within the Internet of Things. So you may kill the robot, but the spirit within it lives and can transfer into any electronics around you. And thus you can never kill it. 2 Corinthians 11.14 warns us that, And no marvel for Satan himself is transformed into an angel of light. And that is what he is doing with technology. He is presenting it as a solution to the problems that he himself created. Very narcissistical, isn't it? The narcissist is like that. They create a problem in your life and then they act like they're the answer to the problem that they created. That is exactly what they will introduce with technology. As we read in Genesis 1:27, God created man in his own image. Yet in Isaiah 14:14 14, 14, it says, "I will ascend above the heights of the cloud, I will be like the most high." Satan is constantly trying to be like God, yet he is not God. He is defeated in Jesus' mighty name. Yet as he is trying, we are going to witness these attempts. You see, God is omnipresent. God sees all, knows all. That's who God is. He's God. Satan is nothing more than a creation. He's a created being that rebelled, but he is a created being. He is not God. He is defeated in Jesus' name. But in his attempts to try to be like God, via transhumanism, he is trying to create his own types of beings. And via artificial intelligence, quantum computing that is hitting our way very, very soon, and with DNA modification, he is trying to do whatever he can do to build his own omnipresence. You see, God does not need a microchip to know when you've fallen short. God just knows instantly because he is there. Satan, on the other hand, because he's a created being, he is defeated in Jesus' mighty name. He needs spying to be able to know everything that you're doing. And when you turn on your phone as an example, and it already says, bloop, like a little pop-up, you're 10 minutes away from your next destination. You didn't even tell it what the next destination next destination was. Yet artificial intelligence has already the ability to recognize what your behaviors and traits are, so it already understands more about you than you realize, so it knows that if he gets up at 10 and he leaves at 10.15, that means he's going here. It's diabolical. The things that are happening around us are diabolical, and I want you to get prepared because if you do not get prepared, it's going to catch you in it by surprise. While people are sleeping, they're literally telling you what they are doing and most just aren't paying attention. Um, this is just a little glance. I want you to look at these articles so that you can see the spirit of the Antichrist all over them. In this article, it states that they started dating a sex doll after their fiancé left them. And he's even introduced a sex doll to his mom. Wow. I, I, I don't know how his mom must have reacted to that. That's some... That's some crazy, crazy stuff. I mean, that's absolutely bananas yet. You know, he's proud of it. He's smiling there. Look at him. CRISPR gene editing technologies. Uh, folks, they are allowing you to now use CRISPR in your home. They are going to be sharing with you tools for you to be able to learn how to modify DNA to learn how to be able to do these things in your own home. It's going to be little kits that they may sell at some point in time in the future, but before that, they're going to introduce you to CRISPR-Cas9 technology via the foods that you eat. They'll per you see, because the world is in a lot worse condition than most people realize, okay? Right now, we're in a stage in age in our world that there are parts of this earth that if they don't manufacture rain, there is no rain. There are parts of Earth that if they do not modify DNA of plants, 
there is no crops. I happen to believe that there are a lot more plagues all around us than many could realize and they're using technologies from the fallen angels to try to fill in the gaps, but time is going to be against them and you're going to see it affect you and I at some point in time. Because in the Titanic, there was a little leak at one point in time and you try to patch that leak up, but guess what? You're running out of time. And Satan knows that his time is short. So no amount of cloud seeding, no amount of DNA modification can stop the judgment that is approaching Earth. This graph shows Texas droughts over the past thousand years. All of these dips below this line represent a severe drought. And Texas has a long history of them. This light blue section is data from tree ring observations. The dark blue is modern data from the past hundred years. And it suggests that the droughts are becoming hotter and more severe. That has a lot to do with climate change. The average temperature in Texas has increased by about 1.5 degrees Fahrenheit since the early 1900s. And the rate of increase is going up. Record breaking temperatures. Record heat. 100 plus degree days. Dangerous heat already turning historic. This year, Texas has already hit record temperatures, including here in the West Texas city of San Angelo. Some farmers in this area of Texas deny that human activity is driving climate change, but they all agree on one thing. Things are definitely getting worse. This year's definitely different. Earlier, hotter, already drier. Jeans acres of bare cotton fields are some of the clearest proof of the damage a drought can cause. When it's this dry, we just can't pump enough water to get that crop growing. Looking out here, that's none of these acres will be harvested. Usually, rain is absorbed into the ground. Plants and crops soak up the water they need, and the rest keeps the soil moist, fills up the aquifers, and the runoff fills up the lakes. Eventually, evaporation and plant transpiration release water back into the atmosphere, where it becomes precipitation again. This is the water cycle that keeps us alive. When temperatures are unusually warm, this cycle is disrupted. Plants hold on to their water and transpire less, and evaporation from the ground happens too fast. Together, they destabilize the cycle and prolong the lack of rain. And while this lack of rain hurts everyone, it's farmers who feel it the most. Some days it is pretty disheartening. You, you look at that. We always want to be a farmer. You want to grow a good crop. We want to plant it, we want to get it up. We want to grow it. Nothing more beautiful than waste high cotton, but uh, it's not going to happen. And we know that living here, that it doesn't always happen. But it, it is a struggle. But there is a technology that can help protect this cycle. It's called cloud seeding and it involves getting the clouds to make more rain. So I visited the West Texas Weather Modification Association, one of many organizations around the world that practice cloud seeding. And so basically what you do in the sky is you're kind of coaxing the cloud to produce more rain, right? Exactly, right. We're just getting more rain out of, out of a cloud than would otherwise be the case. On stormy days, pilots load up small planes with these special flares full of chemicals like silver iodide and fly to the edge of thunderstorms to launch the flares into the clouds. Thunderstorm clouds are full of droplets of super cool liquid water, meaning they are in freezing temperatures, but they are still liquid. These drops are too small to freeze and too small to merge. They are also too light for gravity to pull them down, so they just float around in the cloud. Enter silver iodide. The silver iodide particles mimic ice crystals and provide the scaffolding of sorts for ice to form. That ice then grows very efficiently by consuming the super cool liquid drops. Usually after about 20 minutes, they grow large enough and fall out of the cloud as precipitation. More rain means fuller lakes, rivers, and aquifers. Done consistently, the hope is that cloud seeding can help bank water. This keeps the soil wet longer and can help protect the water cycle when things get really dry during a drought. Yet we see that we've never had a technology like CRISPR before gene editing moves into the clinic. So gene editing is moving into the supermarkets, gene editing is moving into the clinics. 
But did we not mention that Satan comes as an angel of light? Yes, we did. And this is exactly what CRISPR-Cas9 technology and the technologies of the Antichrist system are going to do for you. They're going to tell you the benefits. They're never going to tell you the lie. So now they're telling you the benefits of CRISPR-Cas9 technology that they can is actually isolate certain infections and pull them away from your body. So the way it'll work is they can possibly give you a nano chip that you take that breaks off into your system and then it starts hunting for that DNA and it pulls it out of your DNA. It goes hunting for that infection and it attacks it right on the spot. They are treating you like you are a computer and they are treating this as if CRISPR-Cas9 is the antivirus. So they talk down on the human creation and they talk up the solution. The, the, these satanic fallen angel technologies, they can cure you. All you have to do is let them modify your DNA sequence. Ephesians 6.12, folks. We wrestle not against flesh and blood. None of these things should surprise us. I always do update videos on these because I like to keep you informed, but we've been talking about this for a very, very long time, but now these things are no longer a conspiracy. Now these things are full-blown reality in front of you. The principalities that we're facing, the entities that we're facing, they are hard at work. They're hard at work. Here we have the first vagina on a chip that will introduce a lot of experimental things upon us in the future. With technologies, they've been able to extract DNA from human beings to such a point that they've been able to design an artificial vagina. And they have been conducting massive studies. Here it says, scientists successfully edit the genes of nature's master manipulators. So they can now isolate genes in such a way that they boast about it now. They boast about the fact that with CRISPR, they can graft DNA. They boast about it now. Satan comes as an angel of light. They're slowly introducing you ways that they can heal you, ways that they can extend your life. And as we mentioned, Satan comes as an angel of light. And they're slowly introducing you the acceptance of transhumanism into your life because their plans are to merge transhumanism, artificial intelligence, and the internet of things all together. A day is coming where you will not be able to buy or sell or trade except you have a mark. You know, Revelation 13, 16 through 17, and he called all both small and great, rich, poor, free and bond to receive a mark in the right hand or in their forehead, and that no man might buy or sell save he that had the mark or the name of the beast or the number of his name. Now, when you look at this, you see that it's not just a class of people. It doesn't matter if you're rich. It doesn't matter if you're poor. It doesn't matter if you're great. It doesn't matter if you're small. A day is coming when the beast system arrives. And it's already here. It's just one of those things that you, it's incognito. But once it kicks in and in effect that you will not be able to buy or sell except you're part of the system. I am not saying by reading that, that this means that it's a microchip. I believe that the technologies that are now available can blow a microchip out the water like nothing, okay? But I am saying that a moment is coming where we will not be able to buy or sell. How will that work? I do not know. I do think that God will still provide and I do think that there's still going to be God's people bartering and working with each other and helping with each other as much as we possibly can and be there for each other. But one thing for sure, it's warning us of a moment that is coming to earth. So as they're slowly speaking up the benefits of transhumanism, understand that they're also pushing technology to the next level. You see that Neuralink for Elon Musk's company has already begun brain implant testing. You know this already. Did we not read earlier that Satan wants to be like the most high? Did we not talk earlier in this video that Satan is defeated, that Satan is defeated in Jesus' mighty name, yet even though he's defeated, he wants to be like the most high. He wants to build his own version of omnipresence. And the people are so willing to accept technologies that are gonna heal them. They're so willing to accept technologies that are going to expand their lifespan. They're willing to accept technologies that could even cure depression. Because according to them, if you take a chip in your brain, they can now cure your depression. What a lie from Satan. Amazon wants to kill the barcode. Because according to them, barcodes work well for people, but not for robots. So you're going to see that the barcode at some point in time will fade away. You may be able to walk into a supermarket 
and walk out and everything's going to be purchased and paid and done. You don't even have to scan it. Retail is changing rapidly and brick and mortar stores face more challenges than ever. Like these long lines. Let's follow this customer and see how the shopping experience is different with Fujitsu's RFID self-checkout. At first, he shops as usual. The aisles look the same. But notice how all items are pre-tagged with an RFID tag, eliminating the need for scanning individual barcodes at point of sale. Now that he's done shopping, it's time to check out. And wait in a long line? Not so fast. Let's replace half the traditional checkouts with RFID checkout with Palm Secure. Of course, our shopper chooses to check out at the RFID checkout because there's no wait. To begin the checkout process, the customer walks up to a vacant RFID checkout. The customer checks in with his palm using Fujitsu Palm Secure Palm Vein Biometrics. The screen welcomes him as a loyalty customer, and then he simply walks through the RFID checkout. The RFID checkout will scan all items as he walks through with an extraordinarily high accuracy. Once scanned and paid, the happy customer exits the store, not having had to wait in a long line. Now, let's reimagine this in a clothing store. As with the previous customer, this customer shops as she normally would. Notice how in an apparel store, all items have hanging RFID tags. Looks like she's ready to check out. The customer approaches a traditional point-of-sale checkout, complete with a daunting line. But wait, now the customer has another option. This customer also prefers not to wait in the long line, so she approaches the Mini Express self-checkout. Notice again how the customer does not have to remove items from her cart. She simply drops the basket in a slot and pushes the scan button. Once scanned, the customer is given multiple payment options. She chooses to pay with Palm, a quick and easy way to pay. The customer takes the receipt and is able to leave the store without any hassle. So why not go from this to this with Fujitsu's newest innovations that are reinventing shopping? But of course, that takes in consideration that you yourself become a computer. Because for it to be able to track all of that to you, you yourself will need to be microchipped. Trillions of tiny self-replicating satellites could unlock interstellar travel. So the benefits are being sold every single day. Every single day. Artificial intelligence allows them to measure times in trillions of a billionth of a second. In Genesis 6, we see that the fallen angels came upon the women of the earth. And we see that all over the world, in every world culture, you see that something happened. Every world culture tells you that the fallen arrived on earth. Every world culture tells you that there was a flood of judgment, talks about an ark, talks about Noah. For some reason, people don't want to listen. And the scriptures tell you that the last days will be as the days of Noah. And it says that it'll be as the days of Lot. And when you look around us, do you not see the days of Lot all around us in sodomy? I think I can see your beard. I see. You can see my beard? Oh no! Hi. Hi, how are you? What's your name? Miko. Miko? I'm Isabella. What's your name? Kristen. Kristen? Nice to meet you. I'm Isabella. How are you doing? Good. Good. Are you nervous? Yes. How come? Do I look scary? Do you know what I am? No? I'm a drag queen. Have you ever heard of a drag queen before? No? So GLAD is for this? Human rights campaign is for this? Oh, they're for it. It's happening all over the country. It's part of a national tour called the Drag Queen Christmas. 36 shows, 18 different states. The reason you know what it's like inside and not just relying on the lies of NBC News and the Washington Post is because Taylor Hansen, an independent journalist, went there and got that footage with the help of the Texas Family Project. Twitter immediately suspended Hansen for telling the truth about what was going on. 
amazingly, Taylor Hansen joins us tonight. Taylor, thanks so much for coming on. Um, so I, th I think your video basically answers my questions. This wasn't an adult thing. This was a kid thing or kids there. That was the point, right? Yeah, you're completely right, Tucker. I mean, this was marketed towards children in the flyer itself. It literally says all ages. And I don't know about you, I mean, but the video that I watched, it does not entitle anything that includes, you know, it's appropriate for all ages in this. And when you look at technologies, when you look at artificial intelligence, when you look at UFOs, what they call UFOs that are nothing more than fallen angels and demons, you're seeing as the days of Noah and as the days of Lot, right before your very eyes, and they're slowly going to corner humanity. They're slowly going to corner us. But if you are prepared, then how can you be prepared? By standing on the word of God. Listen, Luke 21, 11 says, And great earthquakes shall be in diverse places, and famines and pestilences. Like I'm telling you, I believe that there are famines, and I believe that there are pestilences all around us already. I just believe that the powers that be have done an excellent job at hiding it from you. And they're using technologies of the fallen to try to confuse you and make you think that, hey, everything is okay, but everything's far from okay. Jesus is at the door and Jesus is coming. The verse also says, in fearful sight and great signs shall be there from the heavens. I believe we're going to see things arrive and I believe we're going to hear things about contact. I believe we're going to witness things that are gonna shake people and it's going to even shake them financially, okay? Uh, you'll see that Wells Fargo is stepping back from mortgages after Fed rate hikes helped crater the U.S. housing market. You're seeing that things are harder to buy, things are harder to sell. Efforts to keep from cashing out their 401k is gaining steam. So you're seeing that even your 401k, even your 401k, which they told you it's for your retirement, now you can probably get it out when you're like 80, when you're dead. But they have an answer coming. They have an answer coming. And this answer is in the form of a universal basic income. It may not be called a universal basic income. It's going to be called something else, but it's going to be a tool that they will use as the narcissist. As the narcissist, they're creating a big problem because we will not be able to keep up with artificial intelligence according to them. According to them, artificial intelligence is way smarter than the human brain. According to them, their creation is the better than you. Isn't that a slanderous accusation? Something that the slanderer would say, Satan? Yeah, it sure is, but that's what they plan. They're planning on replacing you in the workplace, but they understand that you need something to eat, of course, because they're trying to find a way to be able to do all of these things and not have a riot, not have chaos. So they're going to supply a universal basic income, and this universal basic income is going to have requirements. These requirements are going to be in the form of them requesting of you that if you want the government, because at the end of the day, it's the taxpayer that's going to pay you this universal basic income. If you want to be a part of this taxpayer based system and the systems that will run the universal basic income are very biased. All of these artificial intelligence based systems are biased towards anyone who has any faith upon Jesus Christ. Okay. So these artificial intelligence systems are going to serve as supervisors for the Antichrist. So if you want to be a part of universal basic income, you have to consider the fact that this is going to be sold to you as something that the taxpayer is going to give forth for each other so that we can all eat, so that we can all have a roof on our head, so we can all be okay. But it's going to have requirements. It may have requirements such as you may not be able to participate in certain religious activities because it's detrimental to the earth. Because at the end of the day, universal basic income is about us becoming one, an earthly utopia where we look after each other's feelings things where the earth is greener and if you have any thoughts that are detrimental to the universe then how can you partake in the universal basic income you see an example of this already in china even with their stimulus checks in china they gave stimulus check checks that were digital and they had an expiration date and they can control what you can buy and they can control what you can sell they may even have health care requirements they may say well you can take of this benefit every month but because you're partaking in a taxpayer based system you have to do the right thing by the taxpayer and ensure that you have this particular type of jab or ensure that you have this particular type of tracking or ensure that you have this that you have that requirements are coming am i saying that's the mark of the beast no but i am telling you that this is going to be a slow indoctrination that is going to be gladly accepted and when you think of megan 
and the artificial intelligence persecution that is coming your way. The people are ready. The businesses are prepared. And most businesses, can you enter without a badge? You can't. You need a badge. Do you think that you'll be using a badge in the next 10, 15, 20 years if we're still here? Or do you think they're going to improvement and do something different for more security? This is an example. So how do I get ready? You get ready by seeking God and by being prepared and by casting out the spirit of fear, by remembering that Satan operates in fear. Satan operates in fear. No temptation has overtaken you except that which is common to man. But with the temptation, God provides a way out. The same way he provides a way out with a temptation, there is absolutely no trial that can hit you on earth that God will not provide a way for you to survive and a way for you to escape. As a father myself, I'm the sole provider in my house. Do you not think that I was worried when all these mandates came about? I had to shift professions pretty much. All right, I had to sell a property that I had. I had to do all sorts of types of adjustments to make sure that the ministry wasn't impacted, to make sure that I could still provide for my family, but I still did not take the jab, okay? And I'm not talking about against those that took the jabs because everyone did what they had to do because of the reason that they felt they had to do. And I'm not saying that the jab is the mark of the beast because you've been able to buy yourself for the last year or two, right? All of you have, right? So it's not the mark of the beast. It's a personal choice, but I did think that the jab was a very big trial run and the jab was something that gave you a little bit of a glimpse of what is to come okay you saw how humanity turned against each other you saw snitch lines everywhere you saw people let go left and right and now what do you see in the news now you see that there are repercussions because of it all i am saying is take the experience that we had in the last two to three years and prepare prepare to the best of your ability to be able to spread the gospel and be uncompromised to the best of your ability in Jesus mighty name. I want us to pray. Heavenly Father, we want to thank you for your dear son, Jesus Christ. Thank you for giving us life. Thank you for giving us salvation. Thank you for saving us. Thank you for what you do. Heavenly Father, I want the brothers and sisters around the world to leave this video edified and encouraged knowing that the same way that you take care of your beautiful creation, the birds, they don't work the birds that we see every day. They don't work a 40 hour a week job. They don't work overtime. They don't put into their 401k. They don't put into their retirement, yet they eat every single day. Somehow they eat every single day. The beautiful plants and flowers that when the seasons come, when it's spring, they're blossoming and looking phenomenal. Yet when it's winter, they look like they're dead. They're tired, but then spring comes again and you once again Make them as beautiful as you can be. The same way that you take care of your creation, you take care of us. We don't live on the economy of this world. We live on God's economy. And God is a provider. And God is a savior. And God knows what you need, when you need it. And God knows when to give you wisdom. And God knows when to heal you. And God knows when to deliver you. And that anxiety and that fear and that depression that is hitting you and that heaviness that you're feeling because you look at the world and all you see is disastrous thing. Remember that God withholds no good thing from you. There's not a single thing that God withholds from us that's going to be beneficial to our lives. We love you, Heavenly Father. We thank you for protecting us. We thank you for healing us. If there's anyone watching this today, that your family is in disarray, that your children are going through a difficult time, that your health is failing you a little bit, that your business is being affected a little bit, that you feel so depressed and you don't even know why you feel depressed. In Jesus' name, may God heal you in Jesus' mighty name and may he refresh you right now in Jesus' awesome name. For he loves you. He loves you. He cares for you. He has not forgotten about you and you are not outnumbered. That is a lie from Satan. And fear is a spirit and God has not given us a spirit of fear. In Jesus' mighty name, when this video is over, go praise the living God in your home and thank him for his mercy and worship him every day in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. I want to thank you guys for passing by yet another week. Consider sharing this video. If you can, text it to somebody right now. Share it on any platform that you use. Thank you for your ministry support. I mean that. Thank you for your ministry support. And um, I uploaded a video last week. Um, if you can consider watching that video, I'll put it at the end of this video. Check it out. And um, 
check it out and god bless you guys thank you for being who you are thank you for passing by again um if you are not yet subscribed consider subscribing and if you are subscribed make sure you have the notification set to all next to the subscription button there's a bell and just press all because i, I hear from a lot of individuals that say that they're not even being notified and just want to make sure you get the content god bless you thank you for passing by jesus loves you and i love you too